Hello class, in this lesson we're going to learn how to complete the square as a method of solving quadratic equations. So far, this is what we've done. We've learned that we can factor a quadratic uh, equations. Um, if we factor it down, we can then see this kind of a times b is equal to zero structure. Either a is zero or b is zero. Either x uh, is equal to three, that would create you know, a solution or x is equal to negative 1, that would also create a solution. So factoring was one method. We also learned about square rooting. When we have um, the x term squared like this, um, we could move the 7, move the 2, or get rid of it in a sense, uh, to the other side. And then once this x plus 3, once this term is isolated as a square term, we can take the square root and solve and get a solution. But what about something like this? You can't factor it. It's not in a nice form like this one up here. We have an x squared term, we have an x term. Um, we could try to move the 7 to the other side, but we can't just take the square root of of the left-hand side. We, we hit a dead end. So what do we do? It would really be nice if we could somehow turn this into a perfect square like that. So let's kind of look at this. Let's look at some perfect square trinomials. x plus 2 squared, if we expand it, is this. x plus 3 squared, if we expand it, is this. This is, you know, 3 squared x plus 4 squared, expanded, x plus 5 squared. Notice we have some relationships here between the, it's easier to see it with the 5, maybe the 5 and the 25, the 5 and the 10. So we can kind of continue this pattern here and we can just kind of figure out that this must be 36, this must be 49, this must be 6 plus 6. This must be plus 7. So now here, how about this? What, what, what might we do? I'll give you a second to think about it. And it would be the following. And we'll talk more about how we get to this in just a second. But hopefully you got to this yourself. Here it is formally. Completing the square. Com making a perfect square trinomial. If I want to complete the square for this, turn it into a perfect square, what I want to do is I want to take this coefficient here, 16, I want to divide it by 2, and then I want to square it to get 64. This is the same as x plus 8 which happens to be 16 divided by 2 squared. In general, this is the key. This is the key idea to today's lesson. If I have something like this, x squared plus bx, if I take the b and divide it by 2 and square it, this gives me a perfect squared trinomial, which can be rewritten in this form, x plus b over 2, or this is our b, all of this squared. And so the specific example would be x squared minus 8x, 8 divided by 2, or negative 8 divided by 2 squared is 16. Negative 8 divided by 2 is negative 4, so x minus 4 squared is equal to this here. So let's see how we can apply it now to solving quadratics. Oh, well, before we do it, go ahead and do these problems. Um, complete the square. Uh, figure out what to add to it to make it a perfect square trinomial, and then turn it into the perfect square. I'll show the answers in 3, 2, 1. Okay, this is how we apply it to solving a problem like this. Remember, this was not factorable, and, and we don't have a nice perfect square here. So let's do the following. Let's move the 7 to the other side for now. We don't need it on the, this side. Let's figure out what to put in here to create a perfect square. Um, so again, what we do is we take the negative 6 and divide it by 2. 
and then we square this term and we get 9. Now, if I'm adding 9 to the left-hand side, I need to add 9 to the right-hand side in order to keep the equation balanced. So now I could turn um, I can turn this trinomial into a perfect square. This is x minus b over 2. Negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3. It's equal to negative 7 plus 9. So now I have a nice perfect square. I could take the square root, and don't forget the plus or minus right here, and then I could turn this into 3 plus or minus root 2. Try this out for yourself, and I'll show the answer in 3, 2, 1. Okay, do these as well. I'll show these in a little bit as well. 3, 2, 1. Notice right here, I do want to comment about this one here. Um, because this entire equation or expression here is divisible by 2, that's the first thing I'm going to do. I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by 2, and it simplifies it down to this, um, which is just easier to deal with. In fact, completing the square with this 2 coefficient in front is um, not something we're going to do. We're going to always turn it, just complete the square on an x squared. So, you know, if we go back to this previous um, slide, notice how when we completed the square, a is equal to 1. Okay, uh, another application. Writing an equation in vertex form. We have other ways, you know, in the previous unit we looked at how we can um, um, find the vertex of this equation, um, but right now we have standard form, it'd be awfully nice if we can convert it somehow to vertex form. So we're going to do that by completing the square. So I'm going to kind of create a little template here to fill in. I want to complete the square for this, so I'm going to take negative 8, I'm going to divide that by 2 and square it, I get 16. But if I add 16 to this expression here, to keep it equivalent to this very original one, I need to subtract away 16 as well. So I'm basically adding 0. I'm not changing the equation, I'm just kind of uh, doing some manipulation on it. So now I'm going to take these three terms right here and turn that into the perfect square. x minus 4 squared. Then negative 16 plus 2 is my negative 14. So now I have a nice vertex form expression. I could you know, read off instantly that the vertex is at 4, comma, negative 14. It's very nice. So we convert it from standard form into vertex form by completing the square. Let's do one more example. It's a little more tricky. Uh, it's tricky because of the 4 here. Um, you know, when we were completing the square up here, we had a, a coefficient of 1, but in this case, our coefficient is 4. So how do we deal with it? First thing we do is factor out the 4. So, you know, we're going to complete the square on this inside part, not dealing with the 4. So what we're going to do is, um, notice the following here. I am going to add something here in order to complete the square. But if I add something to this equation, I need to subtract away that same amount. And I'm not, I'm not just adding whatever I put in here, I'm adding 4 times that amount, so I need to subtract away 4 times that same amount. Now to complete the square, it's 2 divided by 1 squared. So um, I'm going to keep, or I'm going to uh, put a 1 here in order to complete the square, and then now I just uh, turn this trinomial into the perfect square x plus 1 squared, and then I add up 1 plus 4, or sorry, 1 minus 4, that's minus 3, and so again, I can see I have vertex form, my vertex is at negative 1, negative 3. So that's the lesson for today, um, oops, let me, no, uh, go ahead and do these problems, and I'll show the other answers in 3, 2, 1. Okay, have a good day.